Thank you so much for staying with us. Now let's get to our interview with the guest of the day. Uh, for the past few months, uh, there have been accusations and counter accusations between former governor of Zanfara State, Belo Matawali, and his successor, uh, Governor Daudel Awal. Uh, serious accusations that we need answers to. So joining me tonight for clarification on these issues uh, is the Honorable Commissioner, former Commissioner for Finance in Zamfara State, Honorable Rabi Garba, uh, for discussion on these facts. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Right, so it's more than five months uh, since the assumption of office of Governor Dada Lawal in Zamfara State, but we still hear accusations and counter-accusations with immediate past governor of Belo Matawale. Why this? Let me briefly take you back to how we met Zamfara State in 2019. Uh, we met uh, several challenges, ranging from security uh, issues, uh, contractors, uh, liabilities from contractors, and um, so many things. Uh, even though at that time, uh, the former government uh, selected its priority, and they did their best in their uh, priority they selected. So uh, that is the reason why we didn't blame them for uh, the areas they have touched. Uh, you know, government is a system. Uh, uh, it's a continuous process. Uh, whatever you do or whatever you did, you start, you, uh, you start somewhere and end some, uh, somewhere. Then another person will come and take over from where uh, you stop. So unfortunately, uh, this government uh, of Dr. Tadola Laudari came in. So uh, he came with the, uh, the uh, mission of uh, rescuing Zamfara, as he said. So uh, we handed over brand new Zamfara State uh, to him. But uh, instead of for him to continue from where we stop, uh, he is busy making noise, uh, complaining, giving flimsy excuses, because uh, uh, what he promised to do, he, when he came in, he, uh, he understand that uh, it's not possible he can deliver the campaign uh, promises he made. So that is the reason why he uh, wants to earn a public sympathy by always uh, bringing uh, false accusation and launching a campaign of colony against our leader, uh, Dr. Bella Matoli, and uh, our party, the All Progressive Congress, APC, in the first state. So well, that is uh, uh, the first uh, side. Then the second side, uh, the governor has shown his weakness by uh, inviting two groups. Uh, the first group is admin consultant, who he handed over the administrative affairs of the state to them. Uh, they are responsible or they are in charge, not the governor. Then the second one is uh, conflict interferenos, uh, which he invited a group of medias, a uh, group uh, within the media, which he sponsored uh, them with protests, with uh, a campaign of colony uh, across, so as to uh, win populist sympathy and hide his inadequacies. Right. So you've called um, all of these accusations campaigns of calumny. But before we go into what happened and what didn't happen, uh, tell us briefly some of the key projects executed by the former governor when he was in office between 2019 and 2023? So uh, you see, when we came in, we look at uh, what the former administration give priority to. So they give priority in road construction, which they network all the uh, 14 local government and other communities. So we. Uh, come to the conclusion that we don't need road. The court, uh, road has been constructed virtually over all uh, the 14 local government. So what we need, we need accommodation. We need some, uh, 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 we need accommodation and so on. So we prioritize our uh, 
uh, our uh, focus on uh, building accommodation in the state. Like uh, the, if, if uh, before 2019, if you go to state house of assembly, uh, you will cry. You will say uh, this is the second place after the executive, but it's, the place is not habitable. But now, if you go to state house of assembly, you will see uh, the good work uh, we have done uh, during our time. Go to the government house. Uh, you will see uh, the number of projects executed. Uh, we have built uh, 19 uh, chalet for the 19 northern governors to stay if they come. Uh, we have built a presidential lodge, which the current governor who, 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 who insists that we have not even left a gas cooker for him, he is staying there with his family. And even the bed sheet, he has not changed. He is using the one we left. So that is the reason why we are here today to clear air on all these allegations. The buildings are there. Uh, the, uh, all uh, the structures are there. We spent something around 9 to 10 billion naira to deliver those projects. But unfortunately, three days ago, the came out in one uh, radio station saying that uh, we have spent 90 billion naira in the government house. Then another thing uh, came, uh, the former, uh, the, uh, his current commissioner of budget also came that uh, we spent 10 billion naira. So we don't know who among them is uh, deceiving Nigerians on the figure. All we know, all we know is that we spend 90 billion naira for four years to award the uh, to award contract uh, across all the 14 local government. So this 90 billion naira we uh, uh, spend, we pay 60 billion naira to contractors, which they have delivered. 80% of the project we awarded. Then the remaining ones are ongoing. Uh, the remaining 31 billion naira that is yet to be paid, uh, various contractors have put in uh, their certificate for payment. Uh, the governor deliberately uh, refused to pay them because uh, he wants uh, the state, uh, uh, he don't want those projects to be completed. So uh, that is on the other part. So we handed document for him to go through as guide. If there is any question or if there is any area that he think he didn't understand, the chairman of the transition committee is there. That is uh, Ambassador Bashuri Guda. He should be called to uh, give explanation. But unfortunately, the, gov uh, the governor uh, uh, reduced himself to nothing by inviting those conflict entrepreneurs to launch a campaign of colony instead of to focus on what they have promised to do to the people of the first state because he said we have failed. So uh, people voted him on the, uh, based on the promise he made. So instead of for him to focus on those promises, he ended up uh, making uh, false accusation and counter accusation and find himself in uh, unnecessary traveling and leave the state uh, instead of uh, fear. So right. in this case, uh, uh, from this document you can see is the summary of all the projects we have delivered during our time. And we have handed over this document and he have seen it. If you go, uh, let me give you an example. Here in Abuja, we have three, uh, we have two lodges. Uh, the one uh, that the governor is staying, which we have constructed, and we have, have been completed, and it has uh, been put to use. And the current governor is still using the lodge. Then if you go to uh, Senga Street, also we have uh, another lodge. We construct it, and we lease it out. If you go to Kaduna, Samba Road, we have another, uh, 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 we have another uh, lodge there. We, that place, uh, before 2019, if you go there, you will cry. But now, go and see. You will see uh, uh, the good work that uh, the first administration 
has done in that place. So those assets put together, and including the hotel we bought, which is currently generating income uh, to the state, those uh, uh, project, uh, those projects are now worth of uh, almost 10 to uh, 15 billion naira. But we all uh, we spend less than 3 billion naira to uh, construct those uh, three lodges. Then uh, the hotel we bought. All in all, we spend like five billion naira. But the uh, current uh, or the, bal uh, the current value of those assets is uh, more than 15 billion naira. So you have seen part of the good work uh, that the development has done. But uh, unfortunately, the PDP government in the state doesn't want uh, this achievement. Uh, they only resolve to self-help and uh, uh, always uh, making noise around the media. Then going back to Damfara, uh, the governor was quoted to have been saying that we didn't construct even 20, uh, uh, 200 meter road. Then the reply is this. He should go to Kaiwa uh, Lamba, uh, Gidan Goga Road, it's 12 kilometer road. It was constructed and it has been put to use. Then Lamarike Kanoma Road, it's 28 kilometer. It has been completed. So coming back to Gusau Township Road, even the, uh, the road in the government house uh, is more than 200 meter. So the governor is uh, been, uh, he's either been uh, economical to the truth or he is deliberately misleading Nigerians on the achievement of the former administration. So uh, also, uh, we ha I heard that uh, the commissioner of budget saying that the primary health centers that we have built, we have built 147 primary health centers in the state. Uh, but the, at the end of the day, the commissioner of budget came out to say that it was World Bank that uh, financed the project. So I'm using this medium to challenge the World Bank to come out and denounce the claims by the commissioner of budget uh, that 147 primary health care centers was built by the World Bank funds. Or if the World Bank keep quiet, uh, definitely World Bank uh, connive with the, former commis uh, with the current commissioner of budget to uh, discredit the person and the uh, government, the former government of uh, the Tavello Matawali. Then uh, this project that we have completed, they are visible for anyone to see. And it's something that is asserting. It's something that anybody uh, who wish to see, they are available. And the document is also available for anyone, even the TV station, if you want it, will give you so that you uh, uh, be going to ascertain right. what I have said, if it is true or not. All right. So, Honorable Garba, I mean, it pleases me to tell you that uh, there are more issues to be addressed. So, another one is the alleged embezzlement of 4.5 billion naira meant for the construction of the Guzo Cargo Airport. And there are accusations that nothing is done about that. How will you react to that? <laughs> so, honestly, uh, it's absolutely light and it's not true. Uh, the contract was awarded at the cost of 11 billion, 11.5 billion naira. Uh, would uh, the appointed consultant to supervise the project? So unfortunately, the project is on, and the uh, contractor is on, uh, was on site, and equally the consultant was also on site. But immediately after this government came in, they want to. Uh, revoked the contract by all means and awarded it uh, to one of his friends who financed his campaign. Uh, he wants to pay him back. 
uh, he wanted to award the contract at the cost of 50 billion naira to uh, the company. But unfortunate for him, he has not followed uh, a due process in uh, uh, terminating the contract of the uh, company that is currently working uh, in the site. They went ahead and terminate the contract without following the due process. So three of his people, the governor himself, the SA Economic Matters, and one of uh, his friends, a political scientist from the University of Abuja, and his principal private secretary, they sat down and they timing the work done, uh, and determined the work done uh, from the uh, beginning of the project up to that level, and they come to the conclusion that the work is either 10% or 19%. So at the end of the day, they conclude that the work is 19%, and they need a refund of 4.5 billion naira from the contractor. So based on this project, it is only the consultant that we appointed, that is the state executive council at that time, that appointed the consultant, he is to give the report that the state government will, be, uh, will use to determine the work done. So unfortunately, they went ahead and terminated the contract. The contractor took the state government to court. From this document, uh, you can see uh, the matter is in court. So we don't want to uh, make further uh, explanation as regards to this issue because the matter has been taken to court. We will allow the court to determine uh, what actually transpired uh, All right. government and the uh, company that is Avic Engineering. So, so there is uh, another in this case, there is nothing like there is nothing like 4.5 billion. It doesn't exist. Okay. So there is another allegation. Uh, this time it's about um, 18 billion naira tax liability and 1.2 billion naira Kaduna Electricity Distribution Company liability. I uh, want you to tell us more about that. Yes. So uh, the issue of uh, tax liability, honestly, uh, when I had the governor quoted to have been saying that 18 billion naira was left to him as liability that he is uh, to pay FRS. So I just laugh. Maybe he choose to deliberately embarrass himself or he choose to win a public sympathy. The reason why I say so is that based on the document we handed over to him, if he goes to page 43 of that document, he will see a categorization of two issues. One, uh, undisputed tax liability. That is this tax liability uh, this liability is an asset to them for the state government. It's liability to those companies like banks that refuse to pay uh, payee and other taxes to them for the state government. So this uh, money uh, is an asset. The first category is 13.4 billion naira, which is not in dispute. <laughs> so the governor can go ahead and collect the money back to the state so that he will put them to use. Then the second uh, phase is disputed tax liability to the tune of uh, 18.5 billion naira. That is what the governor is, saying, uh, is uh, talking about. This disputed tax liability is an asset to the state. It's a liability to banks uh, and to uh, various uh, government institutions. So it is also so collectible when they sit down and reconcile the figure and get what is supposed to be uh, uh, made for the land for the state. So in this case, there is nothing like uh, one, uh, 18 billion naira tax liability. The only thing is they didn't understand and they don't want to understand. But the reality on the ground is that uh, there is nothing like tax, li uh, tax burden that we left to the state. Right. This, uh, right. we left uh, t uh, 32, 32 billion naira in a tax asset so that they can go and collect them. Uh, another thing is that this letter, you can see, 
I don't know who is contradicting who. The governor was saying that there is 18 billion naira tax liability. But this letter written by the chairman, both of internal revenues and for the state, and it was signed and delivered to uh, Secretary Joint Tax Board, uh, uh, Sokode Christian FRS House uh, Annex. It was delivered on 25 of August, 2023. They are demanding for uh, 5.3 billion naira from the money that he is claiming that we left as liability. So how come this amount of this letter come in? So the governor is uh, resolved uh, to make himself very chief. All right. This public interference are very dangerous. They are the one telling him lies, and they are embarrassed. They don't know they are embarrassing him. Uh, uh, in the right. national television. Uh, in one minute, uh, what do you know about the this loan obtained also. from... All right. In one minute, uh, what do you know about the loan obtained from Amcon by the last uh, government in Zamfara State? Let me ask you. Uh, is uh, Amcon giving loan to state? If yes, then we collect it. If no... So you go and find out from them how much do we collect it. They should come with the evidence. So, so you are see, you, you have seen, they have, uh, they have been showing their inadequacy. If they don't know, they should come and ask. Instead of Honourable for them Garber, to ask questions, there is nothing bad in, in asking questions. Honorable Garba, we're out of time. This is a direct question. Quickly tell us, was yes. there any loan collected from the last, uh, from Amcon by the last administration? Yes or no? Or was any money collected? There was no money collected. The only thing is that if I can remember, there was a case between Unity Bank, the uh, North Bridge Company, and the Zamfara State Government. Uh, this issue, uh, this case, uh, happened. Uh, started around 20, uh, 2007, 2008, which the Amcon uh, wanted to take over one of the com oh, uh, that company. Uh, sorry, the uh, Unity Bank wanted to take over uh, based on judgment uh, awarded against the company. So the company at that time uh, used them for the state government as collateral, which at the end of the day, we came out to explain that there is nothing like uh, any collateral or any guarantee from the state government. So in this case, there is no way that the state can go to Amcom and borrow money. It even doesn't exist. It's, it's, it's not there. Right. So uh, uh, a reasonable human being, uh, and even you that is asking question, you know that Amcom doesn't give loan to states. So it right. doesn't exist. All right. Uh, Honorable Garber, finally, how will you describe the situ security situation in Zamfara State? So uh, you asked uh, ask 1.2 billion naira, uh, which the time. governor... Yes, I know, but let me quickly say this. Uh, the issue of CATCO, which the governor said we have uh, left 1.2 billion naira debt, honestly speaking, is not true. What, we, what is left uh, as at May 29, 2019, is 182 million naira. Uh, the company submitted demand notice of 952, uh, uh, 954, which we sat down between the MD, the governor, and myself, and the two commissioners. We sat down and agreed to form a committee, which the committee and the report of the committee is there. Uh, they have uh, arrived at that the state government has paid almost 770 million naira out of 954 million naira. So let me make this clear. Uh, there is no 1.2 billion naira. Therefore, people of Zamfara should watch the governor very carefully because this claim he made is absolutely not true. It's just that they want to steal money to root, to root that claim 
which we will not let that to happen. We have the document. We started this, and we end the matter before he came. So we will not allow him, because I know that he has a uh, uh, share in Cape Coast World, almost $5 uh, million. So there is no way we can allow him to take uh, one billion naira out of the Paracopa to in the name of settlement of this liability. The evidence is there that the state government has paid Ketco, and if Ketco say, uh, if they have anything contrary to what I say, they should come out and right. present I to the public that how they arrived at 1.2 billion naira. That's me. Of time. We can end this conversation this way. Thank you so much for coming on Politics Tonight. I've been speaking with a former commissioner for finance in Zamfara State. Rabiu Garba, thank you for joining us tonight as you help us with some uh, clarification.